So last week I posted a photo on Instagram of me and Zoe with the caption saying, Tegus are bad pets. <laughs> and as you can imagine, there's a lot of opinions and I love it. I love all the opinions. I want all the opinions. That's why I posted it. Honestly, I want to see what everyone had to say. And man, you had a lot to say and I love it. So let's talk about that a little bit. So when I say pet, there's a lot of differences in what a pet is. I think to different people, it can mean different things. So for us reptile keepers, we love our reptiles and we want more reptiles. And so we're like, that is a pet. That lizard is a pet. I mean, if you give us a Komodo dragon, we're like, that is a pet. <laughs> so that's not what I'm talking about. So as a background, I work with the public a lot. I do reptile encounters for kids, for adults, for schools, all over the place. And I come in contact with a lot of people who are intrigued by reptiles, but they don't know anything about them. And at the end of my shows, most of the time, they're like, oh, we want a snake. We want a lizard. What can I do? What, what, what Which one's a good one? And that's why I say tegus are good pets, because in my definition of a pet, it's one that is manageable with a house, it's one that eats a pretty basic, good, easy diet, or at least commercially available. And one that is fairly manageable and easy to train. So it depends on your tegu, of course, but I don't think they hit all that. Um, I think tegus can be quite difficult and I don't think the housing is easy. So for a general person looking to just come home to a dog, come home to an animal, go along with their life and do their everyday stuff, tegus are terrible pets. For us reptile people, awesome pets. So it depends on which way you're thinking. So since we're talking about tegus, here's my tegu. This is Zoe. Zoe is my Argentine black and white tegu. She is around six years old. I rescued her at age two. Um, I don't really know much about her backstory, but I got her directly from the owner. Basically, it wasn't really brought to my attention, honestly, but she lost her toes on one side and that's because the humidity wasn't kept high enough by her original owner. And then also she lost her, ooh, she lost her tail and she grew back really nicely, but she lost her tail because she got afraid. And um, I know, all I know about their situation was that they were housing two tegus and the male died. So they were like, we don't want the female. Males are typically the more, you know, sought after ones because they have the big chipmunk cheeks. So they have those big jowls and they think they look cute. And for me, I, I totally get it, but also I don't get it. Like girl tegus are my thing. I love their like slim looking face. And I like that they look like little alligators or tree monitors. So I think they're really cool looking. So it's everyone's taste has something different, but um, I think she's a special girl. She's been doing great since I've had her. She was a complete disaster when I got her. She would lunge at my face. She did not trust me. She was insane. Um, I would never trust her around any children. And I never thought in a million years after two years of training, I would be able to bring her to reptile shows. And she is awesome. So I still always like, you know, do my precautions and make sure that, you know, the kids aren't too crazy, but she's been fantastic. I'm so proud of this girl, how she's kind of turned around her personality and um, become a great well-rounded lizard right? <laughs> so I'm gonna put it back down. On my posts on Instagram, there were a lot of different opinions, which is really cool. Like I loved hearing them all. A lot of people had experiences where they're just like, we love tegus. And then other people are like, no, I'm right with you. My tegu could not be in a cage. She is owning the house. And I love that too. So there's a lot of different things. People say they're easy to train. Other people are like, I'm not really a tegu lover. And um, I really enjoy getting to know everyone's opinions and everyone's experience because I have a limited experience. I mean, my girl, she was two years old when I got her. She wasn't in the best situation. I never have had a baby tegu raising it from a baby to an adult. So I don't know how that process is. I'm assuming based on what I read, uh, from my comments on here on Instagram, it seems like, you know, it is a great experience and a really fun one to be had. So maybe one day, maybe she'll get a friend, but not right now, <laughs> too much. One of the funny things about Zoe is she loves, loves plastic bags. She always goes in them. I don't know if it's a the noise they make. I don't know if they feel cool to her, but she's always trying to find a plastic bag. <laughs> it's just a weird thing. I don't get it. She's a weird lady. 
And there she goes again, trying to find a plastic bag. So one of the main reasons I just think tegus are just not great pets is because they just need so much space. So a tegu is not going to be happy in a enclosure that you get at the big park pet store or a fish tank. Like you're going to have to get a custom enclosure. You have to get a modular enclosure um, that can be pretty, pretty expensive. And uh, or you can just go ahead and house them in a room, but they're just not going to be happy being contained because if they're here, they want to be over here. And if they're already over here, they won't be over there. So they're always somewhere they want to be or they want to be somewhere else. So it's just not very easy to own them in, in just a general space of like, let's say I want a cool terrarium on my counter. They're not going to be that. They'll be that for like a minute and then it's over in about a year. <laughs> it won't last very long. And the other thing is it's just their diet. Their diet has to be fresh. They need the fresh veggies. They need the lean meats that are fresh. They need some fresh fruit every now and then. It's a lot. And when you're busy with your life and you're busy with kids, you're busy with whatever, going out and getting your lizard some salmon to eat is a pain in the butt. <laughs> it's not fun. So if it's not something that you're doing, um, you know, because it's a passion, because lizards are your passion, because reptiles are a passion, it can become a burden pretty quickly, I think. Before I got used to her, it started getting kind of difficult because I was like completely new to tegus. I didn't really know what I was into um, about four years ago when I got her. So it was it was a difficult transition. Um, I had her in a regular kind of size enclosure, a pretty big one. I think it was about six feet, but yeah, right. Nope, <laughs> six feet's not gonna do. Um, so it didn't work out at the enclosure and then the food was just like, you know, getting used to always having fresh things for her to eat and the amount she eats. It, it was, it was really hard. And one thing I found that really works for me is, um, fresh pet select. So it's a dog food. As long as it's like reptile safe ingredients, it's really good for them. So that's an easy way to do it. There's also reptilinks now, which are basically reptile sausages. And, uh, I haven't really dabbled in those. I've been meaning to, it's just, you know, I don't really have too many animals that need reptilinks or would eat reptilinks. So to for me to go and buy a big box of them and have them sit in the freezer and yada yada, it just doesn't make sense for me. Another reason I just don't recommend them as animals is because they get so big and they need so much space that people tend to just let them go. And I, you know, I just think that there's responsible reptile owners and then there's people who aren't responsible. And I think when people aren't knowledgeable with reptiles and they get into too much of a reptile before they're ready that's when people start releasing them in the wild that's when they just don't get the care they need so i just try to like not talk about tegus as pets because of that reason because you know i don't know who's ready for them i don't know who i'm talking to or how many accommodations they're ready to make for an animal so i don't want to go and say yeah they're great animals i love them because they're this way and they're this way but then the person's like, oh yeah, it sounds fun. And they're just not ready to accommodate the animal like they need to at home. So again, if you're a reptile person, thumbs up. If you're not a reptile person, do not. <laughs> and no problem either way. Start with a bearded dragon, that kind of thing. Work your way into it. See if you like caring for a reptile. See if you really like them, if they fit into your life. And then upgrade later on in a couple of years. But don't just dive into tegus. Just don't do it. It's not fun. It's just not fun when you get too much of an animal. I just think it's smart to just be very conscious of what the animal needs and not go and just get something because it looks cool. That happens a lot. I think I've done that in the past. Um, luckily, uh, I've been able to make the accommodations. I wasn't ready for it, but I've been able to do that. And that was a growing experience. But through my experience, I just want to really stress the importance of being ready for an animal to know what you're getting into and also to kind of think through the what ifs moment. Because like, what if it outgrows a tank? What if this? What if that? And are you ready for those? You know, what if I move? Because there's a lot of people who go and buy sulcata tortoises. Like think how many sulcata tortoises there are. And they're cute as hell when they're babies, but no one thinks about when they get big. They Kool-Aid man through things. They just bust through things. <laughs> and how are you gonna do that if you have like a condo or a small backyard or a old fence that isn't good for keeping back, you know, a large tortoise? Like you're going to lose your tourist. It's going to hit by a car. There's a lot of things that can happen. And it's just, you need to think about those things. It's just not fun. It's not worth it. It's better to get something that you're more equipped for, ready to handle. And then once you're in that situation, or once you have the knowledge to put yourself in a situation to have a more complicated animal, go for it. That's my two cents.
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna find Zoe. I think she's over there. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.